Super Bowl 100 is more than just about the game of football. The Super Bowl is about our culture. What is life going to look like 50 years from here? DNA information is a brand new area that could be providing this new edge to make you the best that you can be. With the active RFID technology, we know everything about what's happening on the field of play in real time. We'll have brand new technologies that we can't even imagine right now. If we look hard enough, we can find genetic variants that protect people from injury. This project is about imagination. What's the crazy new idea that we're going to look back and say, oh yeah, that was the thing that really changed the game. The NFL, for example, might be quite interested in what we learned. If you think about sports as an experiment, the first thing you have to do is collect the data for that experiment. I can't improve something, I can't even generate a hypothesis if I don't have data to back that up. I'm guessing rather than being a scientist about it. We went to visit a company called Zebra Technologies, which has a center based in San Jose called MotionWorks. For the last several years, Zebra has been working with the NFL to track players very much in the same way as companies track their inventories. We're in the business of bringing active RFID technology to that NFL. So we track every player during every game and all their movements. We put two tags on the shoulders of every player and we track all those movements through receivers that are around the stadium 25 times a second. It's funny because we thought it would be used for coaching and schematics, that it would be all about matchups, but it's not. It's all about wellness at the team level. It's really fascinating. The NFL is collecting all of this data on the players running around, how fast they run, where they run, exactly what routes that they're running. And they can use that to understand precisely what the loads the players have actually put on their bodies is. Teams have been using that information to affect their training to keep their players fitter and healthier for longer. So at P3 in Santa Barbara, what they do is they look at the biomechanics of an athlete. A lot of the player tracking that's going on right now is helping us get a better understanding of what a player's demands are during a game. If you understand the loads that a player is incurring, and then you also understand how the player's system deals with these external loads, which is our world, then you have the two principal variables in, in predicting injury risk. The average career span of an NFL running back is about three years. That's a short time for a professional athlete to have a career, and it speaks to the fact that we're just learning how to really specialize, really, really individualize, and really uh, bulletproof these athletes. The idea that a lineman is going to train the same way as a running back, as the same way as a wide receiver, that's already starting to go away, but it's going to be pushed so much further, really treating each athlete as specifically as possible. Our model, and uh, really the purpose for our effort in this field, is to objectify these unique systems that separate athletes. It's going to be about specifying programming. It's performance data, it's injury risk data, it's all about them. This athlete's very, very individual needs and his individual risks. These athletes that have a chance to have professional careers, they're rare resources. It's a big investment. So the teams want this data. They're just figuring out what to do with it right now though. This is a new brave world for these guys. Packers were bracing for the worst news. It appears they have received the worst news. So far this season, the Green Bay Packers have lost Jody Nelson, their star wide receiver, with an ACL tear. And Tony Romo, the quarterback of the Cowboys, has been out with a broken collarbone. Those seem like injuries that maybe we can't predict. But actually, maybe we can. I'm very interested in trying to find out how to use DNA information to help athletes stop their injuries genetically. Precision is, is key. 
the way a lot of athletes train is imprecise. One size fits all. One size fits all plan. model. Not every athlete is the same, as we know. Every athlete is an individual, and so well, maybe maybe we're more similar than we're everyone probably else. more similar. <laughs> but I think precision is is very important, and I think in ten years or beyond, what we can do is take genetic information and personalize training for athletes with the goal of optimization. Can we optimize everything that an athlete's doing for their specific body? So I'm talking to a guard for the New Orleans Saints. I'm telling him about injury risk. And I said, oh, by the way, looks like you have a couple of risk alleles for Achilles tendinopathy. And he just lit up. He said, what? What's that? If you can look at gene variants in different people and see how they can build collagen, which is the main structural protein in ligaments, then maybe you can predict which people have weaker ligaments, which people have stronger ligaments. You know, if a tendon has one single nucleotide polymorphism versus another, then it's going to be more likely to break. This is a simple example with just the beginning of the type of information we have that NFL players should really clamor to know. It's not going to take 50 years to get to the point where athletes go out, get their DNA analyzed, and then take it to their trainers to use it to understand really how they can make themselves better by looking at those gene variants. What you can do with the technology now, that's crazy. The Human Genome Project was targeted for $3 billion. It took 10 years, involved 10 different countries. It sequenced one genome. And that was only 10 or 15 years ago. And then today we can sequence a human genome for under $1,000. And that's, that's a million-fold change in cost. Now we can sequence a human genome for less money than it costs for an MRI. And when you think about that and how that might impact medicine, that's very transformative. So maybe if we look hard enough, we do these studies, we come together, we collaborate, we can find genetic variants that protect people from injury, that protect people from concussion, and that we can start to think about how we can use those insights to actually keep athletes safer. In terms of where we can go in 50 years' time, when we look at DNA analysis, the sky has to be the limit. It will be standard, not just for athletes, but for every single one of us to have knowledge of what our DNA is, know what our injury susceptibility is, know what our illness susceptibility is. Here's the thing. You don't want to leave anything to chance. The athlete of the future, this is just going to be second nature to them. This is just a part of their world. Professional football players realize that when they step on the field, it's like stepping in the ring. You know, it's a dangerous environment. And the more bulletproof they can become before they step in the ring, before they go gladiator, then the best chance they have to survive. Do you have any questions? No. Nope. Okay. When we can finally get to the place that we're treating each individual athlete truly as an individual, and really tailoring everything about their lives, from their training program to their nutrition. And when everything can be focused exactly on that one person, I think we have a lot of potential to unlock in athletes still.